In this lesson, we're going to continue isolating variables, but we're going to work specifically with measurement formulas, surface area, volume, that sort of thing. Let's do some rounding review. Label and pl label the place value of each number. So look at this number here, 683.1094. We need to know the proper vocabulary for these words. So the six is in the hundreds position. 600. Eight is in the tens position. Three is in the ones position. People don't usually have a problem with these ones. It's these under, after the decimal point that it gets a bit confusing. So this one that's here is a tenth. The zero is a hundredth. And the nine, so if you're kind of matching what you would be following here, after tens, hundreds, the next number, if we had, say, a seven in front of that would be a seven thousand. So there's a th on the end, but it's a thousandth. And then after that is a ten thousandth. So don't forget those th's, dth is really on the end. Part B, round each to the nearest tenth. So if you get questions like this, and you can't remember the what place value you need, then, then take a look at this little summary here. To the nearest tenth, that means I want one decimal place. The tenth is the spot after, after the immediately to the right of the decimal. So in this case, the six is in the tenth position. But what I have to do is look to the one beside it. I have to look to the eight. The two, I don't care about at all. I'm not even, that doesn't factor into anything. But the eight tells me what to do with the six. That number, the number after the one that you're looking for, so in this case, the hundredth number tells me if I'm going to round up, or we say round down, but really we don't, we don't make the number go down. We, the number would stay. So an eight, rounds up. That means my answer here would be 4.7. Let's try another one. 23.9514 to the nearest tenth. That means I need to keep this spot. I need to keep a, just one in that spot there. All the rest of these, I'm not going to have anything in either of these other three spots. Where the 5, 1, and 4 are, there won't be anything there. But I look to the one after it. So I look to the hundredth it tells me what to do to the nine. So five and up, anything that's five or higher means round up, round up. So that, that five is telling me I have to round a nine up. And what does nine round up to? Well, nine rounds up to 10, which means I'm gonna have to bump everything ahead. So instead of writing 23 point 10, which I can't write because that changes everything. So my 23.9, I need to change that to a 10. I've got to bump this up. So this is really 24.0.0. Okay, so we need that. We still need the decimal place there. The next one, 0 0.82. So I need one decimal place. So I'm going, to, I'm going to keep something in this spot. I just have to decide, is it going to be an 8 or is it going to change to a 9? The number beside tells me what to do. This tells me to leave it alone. Leave it alone. So it's going to stay as a 0 0.8. Next question, round to the nearest hundredth. So where are the hundredths? Let's look. Hundredths are here. They're the second spot. That means I'm going to need the 7.3. I'm going to need two, two numbers here after the decimal and then I'm going to not write any of these two. So, I, so ignoring this 2 and this 8 right now, is my question going to stay 7.35? Is it going to stay? Or is it going to go up to 7.36? Well, the 2 tells me what to do there. And the 2, so I'll get, I don't care about the 8. The 2 is the number beside the hundredth spot, so it's telling me what to do with the hundredth. The 2 is telling me to leave it alone, 7.35, so rounding down. Next, oh, the next two are kind of crowded there. We've got 867.999 round to the nearest hundredth. So this is my hundredth spot right here. This number will tell me what to do. It tells me to round up. Nine tells me I have to round this number up. I had a 0.99. So point, 0.99 is going to go to a 
0.100, which means I have to round the 9 up, and it kind of, there's a chain reaction here. I go to 868.00. I'm still putting two decimal places in because um, the question said nearest hundredths, so I'm showing those two decimal places. And the last one is 3.48, oh, so there's a lot of decimals here. So I'm going, I'm not going to even look at these ones. I'm going to round to the second decimal spot, but the five is going to tell me if I round the eight up to a nine, or if it stays, which is rounding down, stays as an eight. Which one is it? What does the five tell me to do? What does the five tell me to do to the eight? It tells me to round it up. So that's 3.49. So as I'm sure you've guessed, we're going to be doing some questions with rounding in it. Example one, a cone has a volume of 100 centimeters cubed, a cone. The radius of the base is three centimeters. What is the height of the cone to the nearest tenth? Now you should have a formula sheet with um, all kinds of the, well, this is the topic today's measurement. So it's surface area, volume, perimeter area, all that on a sheet with, with pictures, hopefully, and diagrams labeled. So get your formula sheet and find the correct formula. So we're looking for the cone and we're looking for volume. Let me highlight those. So you're looking at cone, but we don't want to know the surface area of a cone. Make sure you're looking at the volume part of the cone. So you find that on your formula sheet. Uh, you'll notice there is a pi in that formula. And if you have a pi button on your calculator, to take a look, you should always use that it's faster and it's way more accurate than just typing in 3.14. You would only use this if you had a very basic calculator, um, but pi has an infinite number of decimals, not just 3.14, so this is rounded, so it's better to use the pi button if you have it. And a lot of your questions that you'll be doing for, in different textbooks, they use the pi button too, so we wanna make sure our answers match. Okay, did you find your formula? Here's one way of writing it. Sometimes you also see it written with, instead of divided by three, you're multiplying it by a third. It's the same thing. So now we're going to sub in. What can we put in here? Let's look at the numbers. We've got a volume of 100, so I'm gonna put a 100 in there for, for V. 100 equals, I've got a radius of the base is three. So radius of the base, so that's going to go in for R. That's our radius. Remember the cone, you should probably have a picture in front of you. I'll draw a little diagram here. So here's a cone. There's my base at the bottom, and the radius is, is that measurement right there. The height is coming straight down from the top, straight down into the center. That's your height. So pi, I'm going to leave that a pi. I'm not going to write 3.14. My radius is three, and my height, hmm, I don't see any information about my height, and that's what's in the question there. What is the height? I don't know. So that's gonna stay in H divided by three. We are isolating, which is what we've been doing for a while now. We're gonna isolate H because we're looking for what is the height. I wanna isolate H. So what I'm, there's a few things I could do first. What I am gonna do is change this three squared to a nine. You don't have to, um, but I'm gonna do that and then I will be able to reduce with that three. You could start isolating right away, but I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup on this side before I start isolating. So that's nine times H all over three. Now, pi is a constant, it's just a number, right? It's 3.14 with a lot more decimals. So it's just a number. It's not a variable. I'm not isolating, I'm not worried about isolating for pi. I could even write 3.14 there if I wanted to. It's just a number. Nine over three are also numbers. I can cancel them. So nine over three, just think of this piece right here. Because everything's being multiplied together, I can do this, but I don't have to. Um, you know what, let's not do it. I don't wanna confuse you. Let's back that up. Let's do it a different, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Let's, let's go on with the um, isolating. So I'm isolating, and you should have a list of how to isolate. We do the order of operations in reverse. So that's bed mass 
in reverse or some of you might have um, might use pan it might start with a p for parentheses so we have it in reverse order so i'm going to do subtraction and addition first i don't have any of that there's no plus or minus signs next is multiplication and division yes so first i want to get rid of this three right now the variable is an h and the h right now is being divided by three what's the opposite of dividing by three the opposite is multiplying by 3. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. Both sides by 3. These will cancel out. And now I have 300 equals pi times 9. I'm going to write it the other way. I'm going to put the 9 first. 9 times pi times h. So we're still isolating. We're still trying to get h alone. Now 9 is a number and pi is a number. I could divide both and if you have previous steps, it might have told you to divide by everything at once. I could divide everything here by 9 and pi, or I could do it one at a time. So I could right here say I'm going to divide both sides by 9, and then in my next step divide by pi. But since they're being multiplied together, I'm going to do two steps in one here. You don't have to. So I'm going to divide by 9 pi, 9 pi. That leaves me with my h isolated over here. And on the left, I have 300 over 9 pi. Okay, now let's look at the question. It says, what is the height to the nearest tenth? So I have to get out my calculator now. If you've been typing in 3.1 or writing 3.14 all this time, that's fine. But we're going to round here to the nearest tenth. So I want you to put all that into your calculator. You're doing 300 divided by 9, and then you can hit equals. Just do the 300 divided by 9 first. And now, whatever you have on your calculator showing, you're going to divide by and you're going to hit your pi button. Or you're putting in 3.14 and hit equals again. So we're getting a height of, and I'll write down a bunch of numbers here. I've got 10.61032. Lots of numbers there. But I only need the nearest tenth. So in my final answer, therefore, the height of the cone, the height of the cone is 10 point what? 10 point, is it going to stay a 6? Tenth, tenth means this spot only. So is it going to stay a 6 or is it going to go up to a 7? Well, I look at the number beside it. The number beside it is a 1. This 1 tells me to leave the 6 alone. So my answer is 10.6, and I need units on that. Looking back up to the question, centimeters, centimeters squared. So what is the height of the cone to the nearest tenth? The height of the cone is 10.6 centimeters. Well, I told you before I was going to um, show you a little bit of a different step to do here. If you want, um, I'm going to erase this just to make some room. So another way we could have done this step here, let me erase the red markings here, is to have collected some like terms right here. So I could have taken this 9 and this 3 because everything's being multiplied or divided. I have no plus or minus signs. I can do this. I can take 9 over 3, and 9 over 3 is the same as 3. So I divide this by 3, it becomes a 1. I divide this by 3, it becomes a 3. So what I could have done there... Let me just draw another line up here. I could have had 100 equals, so now I have that pi, and I have a 3, and I have an h. And then there's no denominator. Or And then in my next step, I would have divided both sides by 3 pi. Divide both sides by 3 pi here, I would get the same answer. So it's just another way to do it. There's a few, because everything's being multiplied or divided, we have some flexibility and what we want to do first, but we'll still get the same answer. Example two, the surface area of a pyramid is this number here, inches squared, inches squared. The base is 18.07 inches long. Determine the length of the slant height of the pyramid to the nearest hundredth. Okay, get your formula sheet. Look for the pyramid formula, and you should have a picture to go with it. So here's one uh, representation. So here's a pyramid. Now this is a square-based pyramid, which this this question we're doing is also. 
square base, which means the bottom sides are both called B because they're equal to each other. This is kind of an explanation about the where we get the, the total from. It's really saying you're going to take the area. Imagine this side. Imagine this is a slanted side here. We've got it's a triangle and there's four of them. So the total area is there's four triangles. This is surface area. Okay, surface area. You've got four triangles all around the outside, and then you've got the base. That's the B, that's the square. Let me actually put some more dotted lines in there along the base to show you what that is. So the base is at, these dotted lines are supposed to be showing you that this is on the inside. You can't really see them. So my base is a square. I don't really need to worry too much about those other two. I, I just need this formula here. The area of the total is four areas of the triangle and area of the base, which is really this formula right here. So using that formula, I'm going to write the formula out. Surface area, well, let's use a different color here, purple. Surface area equals 2BS plus B squared. Now we've got to fill in some information here. We've got a bunch of unknowns. Let's look at our first sentence. The surface area of a pyramid is 235.25 inches squared. That's the surface area that's going to go in this spot right here. 235.25 equals, now what else have we got? The base is 18.07 inches long. So on this picture, this is my base, this is my B. So we're also given the B value there. So let's sub that in. So we have two times B and B is 18.07. Times S, I don't know that one, plus B squared, B again, 18.07 squared. So what does S stand for? What am I looking for here? S is the slant height. This is the height along the outside. If you were standing at the top and you slid all the way down there, that's the height we're looking, that's the distance we're looking for. This H on the inside is the inner height. That's like what we had on the cone. It goes from the tip straight down to the middle of the inside. So the H goes from the tip straight down to the inside. This slant height comes down the outside. That's what we're looking for, S, and that's what the question says. Determine the length of the slant height to the nearest hundredth. So we're going to have to isolate S. So let's clean this up a little bit first before we isolate. So looking at the order of operations, uh, I'm going to multiply these two together first, two times 18.07, 36.14 S. The S is still there and it's attached with multiplication, so you have to leave it there. Plus, now we're doing 18.07 squared. And when you put that in your calculator, you're gonna get a lot of decimals. The question says round to the nearest hundredth, but we don't round until the end. So we're gonna put um, kind of more decimals that we need than we need here. So 326.5, well, we can put them all down. There's not that many. 0.5249. So we're isolating S. So now that we have done everything we can do here, we're back to the reverse order of operations. And the reverse order of operation says subtraction addition first. And we do have an addition sign here. We didn't have any plus or minus addition signs or anything here. Here we do. So I'm going to collect my constants. I'm first going to subtract this 326.5249 from both sides. Subtract 300, 326.5249 from both sides. Let's do that first. So as I'm writing this, I'm thinking, this is not right. There's a mistake here. The mistake is that I see when I subtract these numbers, I'm going to get a negative, which I can't have. So I looked at my notes. This is supposed to have a one in front of it. So let's just add that one on there right now. 1,000. Okay. Sorry about that. Let's put these ones in here and here. That's better. Yes. So we shouldn't be getting a negative. Of course, when we're talking about... Um, area, surface area, volume, lengths of sides, height, nothing should be negative. So 
Uh, now we need to subtract these two numbers here. Subtract, and you get 908. So again, I'm going to write down all the decimals. I'm not going to round until the end. There's not a lot. 7251 equals 36.14 S. I'm trying to isolate S, so I'm going to have to divide both sides by these are these numbers are attached are these terms 36.14 is attached to S with multiplication. So I have to get rid of it by performing the opposite operation, which is division. And I have to keep both sides balanced. That's the golden rule of algebra. What you do onto one side, you must do onto the other. These two become a one. So now I'm left with S. And we divide these two numbers here. And we have to look at uh, the nearest hundredth. So I'm going to write a few uh, extra decimals out here to 25.14457. Well, I'm looking for the nearest hundredth. Nearest hundredth means I need a, something in the one in the four spot here. So I got to look beside the one in the four. I got to look at this four. This four will tell me what to do. This four will tell me what to do to that four. Am I going to round it up or am I going to let it stay the same? Oops, stay. Well, a four let, uh, rounds down, so that means it stays at 25.14. And we say round down because 25.14 is less than 25.14457. Smaller, it's rounded down. Um, okay, so let me make that into a sentence. Therefore, 25.14 inches is the slant height is the slant height. So there you go, some practice questions with still isolating variables, which we've been doing for a little while now. Isolating variables, practice isolating, but today we're substituting lots of numbers with decimals in them. And that's uh, how you do questions with the rounding.